Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this class, CPTS 475-575 Data Science. Uh, it is 9.10 now, so I'm going to go get started. For uh, those of you who have joined late, uh, uh, we are writing our names, uh, the department we belong to, the program we are in, uh, and where we are joining from. And so go ahead and continue doing that. Uh, this will be uh, the way the class will be conducted. I will have it live uh, in this format. We will meet exactly at nine, uh, from 9 to 10. 9, 10 to 10 is where the class is, but I will start a little bit earlier. Uh, the class will be recorded and then it will be made available. Since you have found your way and you're here, I know you have found the right information, but I will um, make these things uh, clearer as we go forward. Uh, some of you are taking this class as 475, which means you are an undergraduate student. Uh, most likely you are either a junior or a senior. So I would like to say welcome back to campus. Uh, although this is being done remotely, it's on campus nonetheless. Some of you are taking it as 575, and that will be a graduate version of it. And I'll explain what that means. Uh, and you could either be a returning student, somebody who has been uh, a few years here, or completely new. If you are new to WSU, welcome to WSU and welcome to this new semester. Uh, this is the first week of classes and the first day on Monday. Uh, and for most of you, since this one is a nine o'clock class, it could well be the very first class you are having this semester. So on very many levels, uh, welcome to campus and welcome to this remote session. We have not been completely new to having to do this thing online. Uh, most of you have had uh, the experience of switching to remote delivery last spring. Uh, I taught two courses, uh, one large undergraduate course and one graduate course. Both of them went very well. So I'm very hopeful things will go very smoothly. There will be very minimal difference between how things would have been if we were to meet in person and how things will be now that they are online. So I would encourage you to uh, be focused and follow along and, and be comfortable. And since this is morning, uh, it is possible that you have not yet had your coffee or your tea. You can grab it uh, and, and have it by your side. Um, I have my coffee uh, and, and just very basic Zoom protocol, uh, mute when you are not speaking. You are welcome to ask questions and unmute yourself and speak up. Otherwise, mute yourself. Uh, I would encourage you to turn your camera on uh, if you feel comfortable. Uh, I would assume that you are following me along and paying attention to things that we say, and therefore it will not be taken for, for any other, it, I would not be interpreting it in any other way. I am in Pullman. This is my home office. Uh, I am a, a professor in computer science, and I will introduce myself more formally and with some information on slides, but I'm also a parent. So, so I know what it means for students to learn from remote. And, and so uh, I just wanted to make that clear. My expectations and my uh, technology wise is that this will go very smoothly. It will go very well. And I would encourage your participation all along. Uh, take notes, have things like you would have done in, in, in class. And I'm going to be using throughout the semester uh, the chat version uh, for interactions. And so the very first thing I have asked for those of you who have joined late is to introduce yourself by telling me your name, uh, your major, and where you are joining from. I have been watching a little bit so far, and I can see from all over the place, Pullman being the predominant one. Um, so with that start being said, I'm going to get started, and I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, and let me do, go ahead and do that now. I'm going to move this so that I can see more of you better this way. All right, uh, let me see if I can see 
all I need to see. Still possible. Can somebody tell me if you see the presenter mode of the slides or if I'm showing you the other way around? I see the slides. Yeah, I see uh, the slides. Okay, is this the slides, the pres my version, or do you see one that the slide you're supposed to see? First page, great. Okay, so we, we're going to get started. So the goal for today is for me to introduce what this course is about and, and um, have you an understanding of it and what my expectations are, uh, walk through the syllabus and, and um, make you feel, um, know what, what, what is needed. Um, my name is Asafau Gebrameten uh, and you can call me by my first name. Uh, I have, uh, that is Asifo. Uh, it's well, you're welcome to say Professor Asifo, Dr. Asifo, or Dr. Gabramadin, but I prefer to be addressed by my first name. I joined WSU in 2014, uh, and uh, since then I have been doing different things, and, and for those of you who are especially taking this at the graduate level, uh, I am interested in data science. Uh, especially the algorithmic aspects of it, more than the data management aspects of it. Uh, I am interested in graph algorithms uh, and, and network science, high performance computing and bioinformatics, things around wearables, for example, and they have their applications in health related things. My lab is called Scalable Algorithms for Data Science. Uh, we go by the name SCADS for it. Uh, if you see the left bottom portion where you see the logo for my lab, that is what it stands for. Uh, I have had uh, an NSF career award for the last four or five years, uh, and this deals with doing combinatorial algorithm for data analytics. And if you're interested, you can see uh, the website indicated there. Uh, since I came to WSU, I have been teaching, and here is kind of some of the courses I've been teaching and how they have been. Uh, and for some of you, they may have relevance in terms of what you plan to do next. Uh, this course goes by this name, CPTS 475-575. Uh, and uh, with this name, it has been going for the last two years. This will be the third iteration of it. Uh, before that, it had uh, a different name, and it was... Uh, an introduction to data science and it has been running for four years or three years, four, three full semesters before that. Um, there is a very big advantage in having a course that is both conjoined, that's both for grads and undergrads. And as I go along now, you will see what the differences are and what the similarities are. But the biggest advantage is that you've got an experience that you can share, both looking up and looking backwards in terms of having to interact with the students. The other course I teach, it happens in the springs, is Elements of Network Science. And I've been teaching that since I came here. Uh, and some of you, I have had you uh, last last spring when I was teaching it. Uh, I also taught some of you, I know some of the names are familiar uh, and uh, the automata and formal language, I was taught that for the first time last spring. Uh, this semester, this class would meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday 9 to 10, uh, obviously via Zoom, uh, and we will have live sessions all the time. Uh, and so that would be the first thing to say. And my office hours are 10.30 to 12 p.m. on Wednesdays. Uh, if this doesn't happen to be a time that works for you, you are welcome to have an appointment, and that will also be set by Zoom. Uh, the syllabus for this course is available, and you some of you might have already seen it. I will point to exactly where it is located in a second. But, but the information for the Zoom meeting for that one is available there. And so you should be able to see. The teaching assistant for this class is my graduate student, Helen Katanez. Helen is, uh, does research in bioinformatics. And she had been a teaching assistant for this class the last two or three times it was done. She does a phenomenal job with being a TA for this class. Uh, you will get to meet her later on and she would of course have her own uh, office hours that also is via Zoom and information on that is available on the syllabus site. And so this is a little bit about me. 
let me tell you a little bit about what I have found about you. Uh, my goal today is to use the last 10 minutes or so, if we find enough time to break you up into breakout rooms and then we'll get to introduce ourselves. You did a, a very good job telling me about uh, your, where you're uh, coming from and what program you are in, but I think it would be nice to put faces to, to, to those names and, and we get to know to each other. We will not be able to do this just in one day, we will use the rest of this week for doing that, but I think it will be nice to get to practice that one five to ten minutes towards the end. I will have you in breakout rooms. But what I have learned from what I saw on Blackboard, the way you have registered, is that there are 79 students who have enrolled for this class, so we have a fairly large class. 31 of you are taking it as CPTS 475, and 48 of you are taking it as 575. Uh, these numbers, historically, the, every time I thought it would be around this number, but the first week of classes tends to indicate only what it would look like, and I usually have 10% or more towards the, the end of the semester, the, the week. And so I am expecting this could go a little bit up, and for those of you who may not have the right background or this course is not right for you, there may be one or two who may drop, but this will be, generally speaking, what the number would look like. Those of you who are taking it as 475 uh, happen to be computer science students. That's not a big surprise. Almost all of you, and there is a couple of you who are in software engineering and one student in data analytics. Uh, it gets a little more diverse on the graduate version of this, and that has historically been the case all the time. So we've got 48 of you, uh, 28 of you are take, uh, doing this at the master's level, and another 20 of you are doing it PhD. Computer science to be the predominant discipline represented on the, on the master's level, but we've got electrical engineering, we've got a plant biology student, we have a stat student, and we have an educational psychology student. These are now disciplines just as you see them, but as the semester goes and hopefully a little bit of today, you will see who they are, these uh, uh, disciplines that I have represented here. 20 of you are doing PhD students, most of you are computer scientists, or some of, you know, port, a quarter of you, another quarter, or, or what is it called, more than a quarter of you, and, and four of you are in electrical engineering, there's three physics, there's three statistical science, there's two biological systems engineering, we've got a mechanical engineering, veterinary science, and crop science. So this is a very wide spectrum of disciplines and one of the nice things about this course and what would come out of it later on. So I am excited, I'm super excited for having to see this class the way it is. Uh, I have in told you that my expectations for how things would work out technology-wise is great. Uh, I probably should also say that in some ways I have had better interaction with the students since we moved to online last semester. This does not mean I like it. Uh, I like more of physical in-person experience and having people come to my office and have chats and things like that. But I think overall, if I look at how many interactions we have had with people in the engagement, it had been more on the positive side. So this is how you come across to me. And let me continue telling you a little bit about how the course is set up, what resources we have, and how things would look like. Uh, I've got two websites. Uh, one of the websites is more of basic information. Uh, many of you have reached out to me by email when you were planning to take the class. And so this is what the rest of the world sees. Uh, and, and it is a public one. It has got basically the syllabus and some resources, some links to things that we would need throughout the semester. Uh, the more dynamic version, the thing that we would be interacting with all the time is on Osbol. Osbol is a learning platform. Uh, since I came to WC, I've been using it. Some of you who are in computer science are familiar with it. Some of you are not. Uh, so I sent a post on Blackboard uh, on Saturday, I think it was, where I told you here is where it is and you need to go there and, and, and create an account and be added. Most of you were already had an already an account and you are added. This is a place where I would put lecture material. That would mean this is slides uh, and the video would be recorded and it would be made available, a link to it that is. Uh, and so that will be another place. This will be the new thing that we are having now, but otherwise I would put my slides there. Uh, if there is any additional reading material I have, or if there is lecture notes that I just wrote but we didn't discuss them, they will also be made available there. We would also use it for assignments, uh, for submissions uh, and, and for, um, 
to post the assignments themselves. I like to communicate, so I'll be announcing things. I will say at the end of the class, for example, this and this happened today, the material is posted, that type of announcement will come through as well. Uh, and, and it has got the assignments would give me a chance to write rubrics and give you feedback when they are graded by me or by Helen when, when the time comes. So currently, out of those 79, 75 of you are added already. Four of you are on whitelisted. If you have not heard from me by via post yesterday night saying you are on Oswald, this means you are one of those four. So make sure to go ahead and, and add yourself. And the way to do that is to go to this site that is there, and I will post this one on Oswald. Uh, so you should go there, create an account, and then ask to join the course. And when I get that, I will add you. That way, now you will be completely on Oswald. So I will minimally use Blackboard only if I need to. Otherwise, this has got a little bit of simplicity. And my past experience when I have surveyed students at the end is that they like it. So I'd like to keep to use this one this semester as well. What we will be doing this week is uh, on Wednesday, and part of Friday will be to get a little bit deeper and to see what is data science. That is a non-trivial question. Some of you, or most of you, have had a good idea. You know what exactly why you are doing it, and so you've got some idea. But we want to have a, a careful discussion of what the field is, what the different perspectives are, and things like that. But before we get there, before we devote a time, to discuss that, I want to use just this slide to tell you what the course is about, so I can continue with the rest of the description I have had for now. Think of it as one line definition, and this is what you see on the syllabus. It is the study of generalizable extraction of knowledge from data. That would be a good working definition for what data science is. So we don't just want to describe it, we want to be able to generalize. That could be predictive analytics, if you like to call it that way. Something that you could say has enabled you to extract knowledge in a manner that is generalizable. And data becomes an important term there, and anything that has to do with its uh, treatment, with its manipulation, belongs to this data science, to, 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 the, to the field. So it has got, drawing to multiple disciplines. Another big point that you would probably see in different parts of the literature, some people are a little bit careless, to, to say is that this is a field that kind of integrates different skill sets coming from different areas. And the different areas, the predominant ones are computer science, we'll spend some time talking about what I mean by that, computer, mathematics and statistics, and domain expertise, where the notion of having to do something with the data becomes relevant. And this could range from all the science disciplines we know to things that are coming because of the digitization of things. All of these things are pieces, but what I think and what I'd like you when the semester is over and when you have gone through the pieces that are needed for this course is not to have this skill set, just a skill set, but to have this thing that I can't describe in words, but let me call it an art. The art of being able to formulate a, play, a problem that is ill-defined, that is not cleanly given to you, and engineer some effective solutions out of it. Uh, there is no science in it, but you will have plenty of opportunity to craft that art, and that will be something that I would add into what is needed there. So what is the purpose of this course? I want to introduce basic principles, tools, and the general mindset around this, and to be able to apply this to solve real-world open-ended problems. Uh, you will notice when I list the topics that there is a, a variety of topics I would like to cover, and so the goal of this course is more on the red side of things, and that is to your own advantage rather than depth. If we were to go deep in every single topic, then it would be a semester on its own. And what I am more interested in is on how you synthesize these concepts. Uh, there are two programming languages. Uh, primarily, is a, lang a course based on the language R. Uh, some of you are familiar, some of you may not be familiar, but that will be a language that we would use. But I would also, uh, especially towards the latter part of the course, be increasingly using Python. And if some of you have a background more in Python than in R, you would be allowed to do things in Python from the beginning as well. So if I was to pick two languages that are featured in this one that will be important to have skills in and that you will be introduced in if you did not have an introduction before would be R and Python. What are my expectations? 
my expectations are that you have a background uh, in programming, uh, in algorithms and reasonable programming experience. If you are a computer science student, then you have taken 223 by the time you are taking this one. And so you are in reasonable shape in terms of what programming expertise you need to have. If you are not in computer sciences, this applies to those of you who are taking it as 575. Uh, I would expect that level of programming background experience, and it is not important for me how you acquired it. You might have had it through experience in your job, you might have had it by teaching yourself, you might have it by taking a formal course, but something that would be an equivalent of a data structure course, 223 will be, um, uh, will be my expectation. Uh, I expect, uh, everyone to have some working knowledge of linear algebra, especially the numerical aspects of it. Uh, and so if I say singular value decomposition, or if I say something that has got to do with eigenvalues or eigenvectors, those should not be new terms. And it's okay for you to uh, refresh your memory when you need it, but, but that should be something that I expect. Probability and statistics will be another thing that I would uh, expect people to have had. Um, if you, for one reason or another, have got deficiency in one or more of these areas, you have an opportunity to overcome them with some extra effort. So it should not be something that would discourage you from having to pursue it. Those are my expectations for this course. All right, let me take a moment uh, and try to go through uh, some of the topics here. So our goal by the end of this one will be to get an idea for what this course is about, how it is organized, and what you can expect out of it. And, and so we've got the rest of the semester to deal with this. Now it is more of an overview. And I think a good number of you have already seen the syllabus, and so you know what they are. And some of these terms are fairly general ones and so it will be uh, only when you get insight into them that you will see. So as you can see there is got 13 major topics and maybe some rough way of understanding this would be to say you've got something around a week around each one of them. There are some topics where we will spend more than a week and there will be some topics that we need only a lecture or two but it will be fair to say this corresponds very very roughly speaking to about a a topic on each on, on each week and then as I say there are some that will need a little bit of time. This week will be spent on discussing what is data science. Uh, as I mentioned before we will look at different perspectives and we'll look at what big data means and what 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 why it is a science and why now that type of things. Uh, I'm going to spend next week for having an introduction to R for those of you especially who need it and maybe uh, some treatment of high level treatment of an introduction to Python. This will set us up. This will have us understand what the field is and have a tool to work with it. Uh, the third topic, a exploratory data analysis and the data science process are tied back to what data science means and our desire and our skill set and you would be increasingly surprised to find out how much time what needs to have to turn something that is you know, raw data into something that you could call ready for modeling. That is a lengthy process and many people sweat over it for a long time. And that type of thing is what I mean by process. And so we'll see, uh, spell them out and discuss what they are. The exploratory data analysis is a way in which you explore data. Uh, it is one of the places where things are not necessarily emphasized enough in courses that you have had probably if you come from a statistical background by uh, for instance where where you uh, might not have spent enough time for those of you you will you will find out that this is an important skill to have we'll discuss that that will be the third topic data wrangling i used it just because it is around and it will convey what i wanted to say this is about manipulating data data transformation data manipulation and we will be heavily relying on things that are library based and we will be relying more on things around r for doing that that sets up us for something now we are ready to do machine learning type of topic. So we'll have a lecture or two that will overview machine learning and then we'll start topics around linear regression. We'll look at uh, simple linear regression, multiple linear regression and things right uh, around, around problems that are of, of that type. Uh, 
probably a good two weeks of our time we'll spend about classification. We will look at different classification algorithms uh, and, and methods, uh, and that will be the seventh topic. Uh, we'll talk about how to do resampling and bootstrap for having to deal with methods for having to do with, with resampling. The linear classific regression and classification problems are supervised learning, and, and we will be, that will be one portion of machine learning. The other class uh, that we will be spending some time on is unsupervised learning. This is where we will start things like clustering, principal components and analysis, and, and so that will be the ninth topic. Data visualization is important in this class. It has got some connection with things around exploratory data analysis, but I treat it here in the way for where you use data visualization to convince others. When you do exploratory data analysis, there is a lot of data visualization that happens for you to understand what the data is, to try to explore it and come with an insight out of it. What I mean by data visualization on this later portion of the course would be when you want to know, to convince others to take action or to, to convey a message, that is where data visualizations would come. And this has been one of the popular topics when I teach it, and that will be a chance for us to also go a little bit about um, Tableau, where I would give you a chance to be introduced to it. Time series data mining is another topic we'll cover. Uh, these are things where uh, the, uh, the data that you work with is of time series nature. Sensors would be a good example to have uh, in mind, for example, for things like that. We will have some overview of this topic and uh, learn a couple of general methods that would apply. Deep learning is a topic that would cover towards the end of the semester. This has also been a popular topic. We will not have a lot of time, but you would be introduced to it. You will know some basic tools and you probably would be able to use for doing a project in this class or any other thing that you would do. The very last topic will be on ethics. That's an important topic and we will have at least a lecture on, the, on, on it. Uh, let me tell you a couple things now. Uh, now that I've run through the, you know, the topics that we will cover, uh, I would like to know about your background. This will be enabled to enable me to, to some degree, uh, manage how the course should be conducted, to what degree we should go in depth, uh, what level of treatment you would need if we were to decide to have a tutorial on R and Python. And for that reason, I'm going to do a pre-course survey. I call it an initial survey or a pre-course survey. And I've already designed this one. And so there is a Qualtrics survey that I have prepared and I will make that available on Osbol when this class is over. And I would like you to go complete it. Uh, in the past, I used to have people to submit them in a document, but it will get a lot easier if it is on Qualtrics. So it is ready. Uh, and if you wanted to have a little bit of a look before what the questions would look like, I can post just the questions on Osbol so you can see them. But I will make that link available and when you get it, please go ahead and complete it. This will enable me to know your background. This will enable me to decide on the level of depth I would go on some of the topics. And it will also enable me to see what times would be good for having a tutorial on R or on Python. So make sure to do that this week. Uh, take your time. It will ask you a couple questions about your background in terms of courses you've taken that may require thinking. Otherwise, it should be a straightforward survey that you should be able to complete in a few minutes. All right, let me uh, go on. Any questions so far with the pace I'm going? Can I, you can just somebody say if you're following along, fine. Uh, and I should also watch my time. We're doing well. Are you following Hello. along? Good pace. Okay, uh, wonderful, thank you. Uh, so, so let me, uh, Call this coursework and what you are up to to do and how how things are assessed. Um, I'm going to break this one into two. I'm going to start with 475, and then I'm going to uh, show you what the expectations are and what the coursework would look like for 575. Uh, there are four pieces. Uh, the first piece is what I call assignments. Uh, we will have more or less weekly in the first few weeks of the court, the semester where we will have an assignment uh, and they will be five in number totally and and they will constitute 35 percent of your grade uh, and these are going to be 
every assignment will have one main topic. So if the topic we discussed was linear regression, the assignment would be on linear regression. If the topic we discussed was uh, like, for example, what is going to happen this week on the data science, what data science is and the skill sets needed, then the assignment will be around that. If it becomes a question around classification, then the, the assignment would come in that way. And so there would be five of them and they would go kind of progressively. They would be easy in the beginning and they would get a little bit harder towards the end, just as the course goes on. These are going to be submitted individually. You will work alone on them and they would carry equal weight. So five assignments, consider them as seven person weight each, 35 person. A good portion of the grade will come from semester project. Uh, this is going to be an extremely important way for you to make the most out of this course. Uh, one of the greatest feedbacks I have gotten from students when the semester is over is that they learn a lot through projects. I am a big, big believer in projects. This would be something that you would be um, benefiting from in terms of uh, delivering something for yourself, putting together the things that you have learned, uh, having a great thing to say when you interview for jobs. 475 students, I am sure that you, that's what one of the things in your mind. Uh, by having this course, you will increase your chance of having to get jobs that, especially in this area, and having to work on a project would, in, would make you a good, um, it would give you practices and experiences that, uh, that are great. So the, for that reason, I give it 40%. This will be team-based. Uh, you will be a team of two or three. Uh, and so you've got two choices. You can either come up with your own project or you can select from projects that I would propose. And so there will come a time after the fourth or the fifth week of the semester where I would say here are the ideas I have and you get to choose from one of them. If you have your own idea, then you can propose it. And if I approve it, then you can get to work to it. Now, this is not a bad time to start to think about your project. So there may be a reason why you're taking this class and therefore, you know, there may be something that crosses your mind. Maybe you've had a job, maybe you have had a hobby, maybe you have had a class that you've taken, maybe there is something that you would like to explore. And so there is room for you to think about a project and, and, and then I will specify what it needs to satisfy for it to be called a project. But think about a project early on. I will introduce what semester projects would look like down the road in the semester, and there will come a slide where I'll talk about it, but, but, but it's not too early to begin to think about it. And I'll tell, give guidelines for how to write report and, and what a semester project is going to be. The way this will end up is that the very last week of classes, we will have a project report submitted, but also a chance for you to present it. And because now we are having things on Zoom, you can have your portion recorded and you can use it a great, as a great way to uh, promote yourself when the semester is over in terms of job interviews. In the past, I have asked students to make a video, but that will not be necessary now. But if we want to go that route, we could still do that. But I think this format itself will lend in a good way for something like that. Uh, there is only one term, midterm exam, and there will be a late midterm exam. We've got assignments and we've got semester projects. Towards the end of the semester, most of the time will be spent on doing projects. In the beginning, it will be heavy on assignments. So I would like to do the exams to things that would complement these, things that you have not been um, assessed through and during with the assignments and semester projects, what I would like to assess with an exam. Uh, we are online now. Uh, in the last semester, when I taught both of my courses, my, class, my exams were take home. And this worked out well, this is what I intend to do. If I change my mind, I will let you know. But my goal uh, or my initial idea now is to have it take home. It will be late, it will be in the week of November 9th. And the idea for it is you get a chance to go through the material that you have covered in a manner that would make you read through and have it for yourself ready to tell others and to, 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 to instead of having them as pieces, to see. That is my goal with this exam. I very much value participation. The fact that this has become now online is not going to change that in any way. I expect you to participate. You already are great participants. I can see from how you have been handling yourselves. Uh, you will notice uh, today I wanted to go jump into telling you about the courses, but I would invite questions and I would ask certain things to tell me about yourself and I usually like to start the class by having a warm-up question. Now, those of you who have had my class last semester know that uh, and so I would make you that. So when that happens, interact. 
engage, participate, ask me questions, interrupt when I'm talking, uh, especially if you have questions. So I'm not going to be taking attendance because by definition, when we are here, I would know uh, we have 76 participants and there are 76 students in this class. My assumption is that everybody is here now. Uh, there are times when internet may not work. There are times may you may not be able to attend the class that is not unexpected. And so uh, I am going to pay attention to who is coming and how you are participating. I would have surveys every now and then on things that I would ask you. So be active and be participating in that case way. So there is a 5% way that uh, comes along this participation and I would like you to be aware of it. If you are taking this class as 575, you are a graduate student, there is four of the pieces that were discussed before that I don't want to repeat now that still are there but there is one additional element. And that additional element is a survey paper. So you would do your assignments, you would do a semester project, you would have an exam, you would have class participation, just the way the 475 one was. But the purpose of the survey paper, uh, which you will do individually, is to go on a specific topic that's related to this course and go in depth and write a survey paper around it. You're welcome to tie this to the research area you are working in because you're a graduate student and there are things that you, you'll be working on. Uh, or you may choose a topic that we do not have enough time to go into depth. And so you pick one of the topics that are in the course syllabus and uh, do a survey by having to discuss them. This is an excellent way to go in depth in a topic that is of interest to you. We would interact and find out a topic that, I, uh, that we would agree on, on writing a survey paper, but that would be your additional element. Because there is this additional element, then the weights of these other ones would be changed. And so the assignment would carry a little bit less weight. I would like to keep the semester project of equal weight as it is in the CPTS 475 one, but the rest of them, the exam will have a little bit of a lesser value. The participation would remain the same. One distinction I make between projects that are done at 475 and projects that are done at 575 is the nature of what, what they are. Uh, and for a graduate level course, I expect them to have more of um, things that would be developing your own, your own algorithms, your own methods. And if you read carefully in the syllabus, which you find now on OSBOL, now that I have introduced, I have told you OSBOL, which you find there, or on the public website, there is a difference in the language. I want you to be aware of them. But there will be a lecture when we will talk about semester projects dedicated an entire lecture for it. And so you would know what constitutes a semester project and what kind of things are in reach. You are very, very, very much welcome to have a project that is tied directly to your research. And I would like you to benefit by having taken this class directly into your own research. And so there is that opportunity, but you would get the chance to either pick from things that happen in my lab, things that I, that I have project ideas on, or things that come from you. Uh, those are the five pieces if you take this class as 575. Uh, here's a, a quick look at the weekly schedule for how the courses will go for the semester. Uh, and this is more or less like the 13 topics I have told you, uh, what they would look like. And this is a place where actually you would see what sort of topics would take more than a week, what sort of topics would be covered within a week. And you also roughly see how the assignments would go out and come in, would go out and come in. And so you get a good idea. What I would like to do now when you are looking at this slide is to tell you a couple of things. One, the time when this project idea uh, would be the the lecture that I would devote to it will come out, and the fact when I would call it a project proposal. That's when, when I say, here is the ideas I have, come up with your own, choose either from this or, or tell me about it. That will happen roughly around week six. And the reason for it is we would want to have things that have to do with manipulation of data, exploratory data analysis, R and Python skills built together and have an overview of machine learning, and that will be an excellent time to talk about a project. When we come to this place, the project will be most likely on topics that would come later on, and that is perfectly all right. There is no other way of doing this. If we were to wait until we cover all the topics, then it will be the end of the semester before we get to a project. And so it will be introduced at a time when you have the basics, 
but you also have an idea of some overview of the machine learning topics that would come. And so you will be in a place to choose a reasonable project to work on. So as you work on your project, you will pick up the topics, we'll cover them, and so it will be more goal-oriented. And, and I think that has worked out well in the beginning. I will see how things would work, and if we have a chance to bring this a little bit earlier, I will try to do that. But this seems to be my plan for now, and most likely the one that we would follow. The other thing I want to point you out to uh, while you look at this is where the midterm is happening. And you can see my idea, and I have explained what I mean by a late midterm. I would like your finals to be less burdensome for you. I've got many courses that you will be taking most likely, and you've got a project to work on. And think of the report you will write as your final. So it will be due on December 14. December 11th is the last day of classes, and December 14th would have been the day when we would have our finals. That will be when you would turn in your final report. And so more of your time during those times will be spent on having to do a good project and writing your report. And the week, the last week of lectures would be for project presentations. Uh, and so the midterm is kind of close to where the finals would be because I want to cover as many of the topics as possible, but it is still a midterm. And so that is where the November 9th week is. That's another point I want you to see. Uh, I also want you to see where Thanksgiving break is. This week, this year we have it uh, week 14, November 23rd. And so when we will come back from Thanksgiving break, what we will be happening is we will have had started our deep learning class right before Thanksgiving. And so the second portion of that class will, will happen after we come back from Thanksgiving. And so the ethics and course wrap up will, will be the thing that will happen in week 15. The other things that I have skipped over are um, more of an ordering of what, uh, you know, which week we will cover which, which topic. I'd like to stick to this as much as I can. And there may be some room for some flexibility down the road, but this is a good roadmap to keep in mind as the semester goes. And, and that's how I think will we'll, we'll work out. Um, now that I've told you uh, how the, you know, the topics would cover, what my expectations are, and what the coursework is, I think it's a good time now to see what the learning outcomes are. Uh, my syllabus is fairly detailed, and it's, you've got these things um, in one form or another, and, and you probably have seen them already. If not, this will be a good time. This will be a good week to go back and look at them. Uh, they would come early in most other syllabus, but I want uh, the learning outcomes, that is. But I wanted to delay it now, because now I, I've given you everything I, I need to tell you. So given the topics we have, given the way the course is structured, given the coursework involved in terms of assignment and project and, uh, and exam and, and teamwork, here is what I think your learning outcomes are. And one way to think about this one is to say, what is the contract we have? What do I want you to be able to say when the semester is over? Uh, or, or what do you want to, make a checklist for yourself and then say you've done this class, uh, you've got three credits and hopefully you'll get a good grade, but, but what is it that you really would want to say you have been able to do? Is that the way to understand this one? So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of walk through this a little bit and you'll get a chance to look at them. Uh, let me make, just make one point. I have color coded this one just so that it's easier to see. So we've got one color, one line, another color, another line. There is no other reason. I uh, usually, I do that and you will notice some of my slides of that. I usually go for crimson and gray whenever I have a need for having to use colors. Uh, now I have chosen some other things here just for variation. Um, but but this, is, this is what I expect uh, the outcomes would be. This is what you would want to say when the semester is over. You should be able to describe what data science is and the skill sets needed. That's more of a description. That would be a job interview question. That would be something that you would say if you were to go for Thanksgiving break and you are, um, you know, in a, in, in a dinner party in a family, and then you would say, "I'll take this class." And so you should be able to tell them in layman terms what data science is. And if you go to an interview, not in layman terms, but in more sophisticated ways, what data science is. And you've got some precise ways, something that you would say people would know. I've heard the name, it's kind of vague, but you have now, after taking this class, not just having a definition to read, but also going through it, be able to, to describe it. I would like you to be able to describe what the data science process is, 
be able to use R to carry out basic statistical modeling and analysis. I would like you to be able to do exploratory data analysis to gain insight, uh, apply basic machine learning algorithms for predictive modeling, correctly apply validation techniques to assess model performance, apply unsupervised learning methods to discover patterns, trends, and anomalies. This will be more of an exposition of the topics and you do what those methods are, the way the topics were described were around methods, but here you see what you do with them. You discover these like patterns and trends. Uh, use effective data wrangling approaches to manipulate data. You have a way to create effective visualization of data to either communicate or to persuade others. You are able to reason around ethical issues in data science, and you, through the project, would be able to work in teams on data science projects. And you will be able to apply the knowledge you gain through the course to carry out a project, in some cases define your own project, and write a technical report. And this is a good list, and we'll come back and visit this when we come to later in the semester, but have it as a contract for yourself to say this is what you would do. The course doesn't have a textbook. Uh, we, I'm not going to follow a single one. There isn't even a single book that would be useful. The syllabus got a list and you will see me occasionally have drawing to some of the books as more of a resource material for some of the things we would do. But we do not have a textbook for it. And that's good for you. And that would mean you will have to pay attention to what I say as a reading material. You would have to rely on slides and you would be able to take notes as we discuss in, in this one. Uh, we are not going to have the breakout room today, it looks like, because we've got only five minutes or so left. But we'll have got the rest of this week, that is what my plan is, to have this. And so we would do this in our, in our next lecture. But let me very quickly tell you my policies for this class. The Zoom protocol part we have gone through. Uh, com correspondence with me will happen via OSBOL, uh, and we will use that to email me. There is an email facility that you would get. I have talked about attendance. Uh, I'm going to rely on you on having to have academic integrity. I don't want to spend too much time in talking about it. You know what that is. The syllabus has statements around it. But in terms of assignments, uh, there are times when you may not be able to make it on the deadline I told you. Uh, I am okay with up to 48 hours of late submission if you must, but you will pay a penalty for it. And that will be 10% per 24 hours. Uh, so aim for having to meet deadlines and, and submit your solution, your assignments on time so that you don't incur these penalties. Um, and for other details, you can, um, you can consult the, the syllabus. I am very excited that you are in this class and I want to say welcome again. Uh, I think I want to respect your time. There will be classes after this that you would go to. Uh, you have 10 minutes to transition, so you probably don't have a, a reason to jump from one classroom to another, but I would never want to go past the time when it is. Uh, and, and, and in the interest of having to say what the course is about, I have, um, skipped having to divide you into breakout rooms. We will do that in next lecture. Uh, you have told me about yourselves through the chat um, and I'm going to um, kind of look back at this and then understand you and, and if there are, you know, a quick question or two, let me take them now. Anybody has any quick question? How did it go? I just have a quick question on um, your preferred method for uh, participation. Uh, yes. Do you want us to use the chat or should we like just unmute ourselves and jump in? I just hate to interrupt. Oh, uh, no, please don't hate to interrupt. Uh, I would love to be interrupted and, and so jump and, and ask questions if you have. Uh, and the chat will be a great way. So, so I, I have uh, no fast rule on when, when to use chat and when to interrupt me. I would prefer to be interrupted if it is a question about a technical matter rather than me assuming that things have been clear. So please feel free to jump in and ask questions. That will be the perfect, a perfect thing to do. And that would give us a sense for having to say we are unlimited by our you know, remote delivery. Uh, there will be things that I would prom prompt. And so if I say something, then you would use the chat to interact and that would be fine. If you have a question uh, and it is something that doesn't necessarily need my immediate answer in the middle of a lecture, this will not be called a lecture. There one concept that I will describing in a way that I'm 
make sure that you understand. Um, if it is something that can wait or, or something that doesn't immediately need an answer, uh, then putting it in a chat is fine because I will take time to look at the chat and, and, and monitor that one. Uh, Helen was not able to join today, but she will be attending most of the classes and she will be monitoring and helping me out on, on things that have on, on chat. But I'm glad that you asked that question. Please, please feel free to um, uh, unmute yourself and ask. We have a large class and some, some of the discussions would probably happen when we have breakout sessions, but I don't want it to be uh, just lecture me talking all the time. So interrupt and ask. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else has got any questions? Yes? Joe? You are muted, I think. I think you are muted, Steve. All right, maybe you didn't want to ask. All right, we, it's about 10 now. It looks like uh, we, we need to stop. I will see you on Wednesday and we will talk about what data science is and we will definitely- We have a few have... questions in the chat. Oh, okay. Uh, I took 477 last semester in this same course. Uh, I'm not sure about what's for some. Let me take that one offline with you, uh, Joe. Among those asked, uh, can undergrad and grad students work together? And yes, yes. Uh, uh, if you have a minute, then I can continue and talk about that. Uh, yes, uh, in the past, uh, I will show you maybe one time when I get a chance, the three minute videos I have asked the students to produce one of the very best projects I have seen happen when an undergrad student worked with a grad student. And so that is allowed. Uh, and so in fact, it was encouraged. You will get to know each other a little bit when, when I get to breakout rooms during this course of this week and maybe even later. And so that is welcome and, and encouraged. Were there any other questions, James, I missed? Um, there's another person asking, uh, let's see here. So Thomas is helping out with the question on 437. Uh, um, so, so if you want- Are we choosing our group partners or will you create groups? Sorry? Uh, are we choosing our group partners or will you create groups? Uh, we will, I will ask, give people a chance to make groups, but there will be, um, people who would need my help and I will match up. And that will happen on the fourth, fifth week when course proposals, when the project proposals will be out. And so that will be a time to, to make up. But if you have people in mind, you can think about projects and you can think about partners right from the beginning. All right, I guess, I guess this will be a good time again in terms of respecting others time. Let me stop here. Come back on Wednesday, uh, be on time. I would probably start a minute or two early uh, and I will start with a warm up question then. And if there is anything that you did not get an answer for now, uh, make sure to ask me then. All right, I'll see you then. Take care.